Climate change exists outside of human perception. It's bigger than us. We can see local expressions of it, but we can't see the climate changing, and that's really the inherent problem. It's on a scale beyond what we can perceive. The rainforest itself spans nine countries, so as a subject alone, it's hard to imagine as an object. We're really on the tipping point now. New research suggests that actually the, the rainforest is no longer absorbing carbon. There's so much burning happening, it's now a net producer of carbon. But how to tell the story adequately? I mean, we've seen one picture of burning rainforest. We've seen them all in a way. And those pictures are very important, but you know, there's so much more to unpack in the Brazilian Amazon. I'm very interested in trying to find a way to express extremely deeply complex things by looking very carefully at these loaded landscapes, bigger subjects that the camera can't necessarily see. My first big project is my first real project, but I chose the missing persons crisis in, in post-war Balkan nations. A lot of people had not come home from war and had disappeared. They were assumed to have been buried in mass graves, which had never been identified. So the, the beautiful landscape of Bosnia and across the Balkans was underwritten by this tragedy. And so there was an inherent tension within the land itself, but also an inherent abstraction within the subject matter. And I was going around trying to photograph something that you can't put in front of the lens, and I couldn't see. The lack of closure of an entire society to move on from war because of an inability to mourn the dead and I started just looking at the landscape and documenting, I suppose, the, the absence within the lived environment, the inscription on the land, at least emotionally. But for me, it was foundational. In a way, it's something that I keep coming back to in maybe all my projects. Kodak had announced the discontinuation of a specific infrared film called Aerochrome. That was invented in World War II in collaboration with the US military for camouflage detection. So infrared light bounces off the chlorophyll and healthy plants. Camouflage tends to be made of material, fabric or paint, and all of those don't have chlorophyll. If you could image, register infrared light, you could instantly pick out the enemy targets, essentially seeing through the camouflage. In Congo, back then, there was at least 50 different armed groups. I think now there's more than 80 fighting against each other. So it's a very opaque conflict. And that, as a result, means it's very overlooked. I was taking a medium that literally can make visible what we can't see. And I was smashing it into an unseenness. That metaphoric leap was very important. And it turned out, the more I pushed it, it began to really bear fruit. It started to be raising awareness of some of these narratives that I was, I was documenting, and that was remarkable. But that was the sort of beginning of a, of a new phase in my practice, which I think is kind of continuing until today, uh, of using surveillance technologies to try to push the limits of, of, of the camera, of, of the documentary image specifically. Finishing my project in Congo, I found out about a specific surveillance camera that can see and perceive heat. It's proven to, to image the human body heat from 30 kilometers distance, which is a good 19 miles. The image that it produced was very uncanny and haunting. The heat within our blood and our veins is instantly depicted in ways that we can't see with the human eye. Our breath, our sweat, Wait, 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 just a moment, just a moment. And at that time, there was this exponential wave of illegal immigration into, Euro into the European Union. Refugees come to claim their human rights of asylum. This camera itself can be seen as a weapons technology to detect and to turn them back 
So it was the perfect prism to mediate all of the complex narratives that I began to document over a course of several years. There were a lot of people, and there still are, a lot of people dying, drowning, or exposure to the weather. And this camera is designed to indexically reveal human mortality expressed through cellular combustion. This is a remarkable instance of the camera showing us something we can't even see. Red Cross volunteer is rubbing the life-giving heat onto the blankets that have been swaddled around this dying person. And you could see the thermal handprint, the life-giving warmth being transferred. I'm there primarily as a human, and there are instances where we put our things down and help when there's no one else. That's just, just what humans do. But in the instances when we continue to film, when there are other volunteers, for example, working, you know, there's a, there's a real sense of belief in what we do, a sense of faith in, in the importance of the, of the documentary image, of, of the evidential image. Otherwise, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go to those lengths to, to carry those, that kind of recording out. So I made a series of panoramic, large-scale images, heat maps of refugee camps. And I also made a three-screen immersive video called Incoming, with sound by Ben Frost and cinematography by Trevor Tweeton. So th these are good friends of mine who I collaborated with also in the Enclave in Congo, and whom I worked with again on my new film, Broken Spectre. Could we try Ultra on this screen? Yeah, that feels... Photography is at the very heart of understanding the velocity of deforestation. And I began researching the cameras in the satellites that produce all the data. But what, what really made me more curious was the fact that the same cameras are being used by agribusiness and mining to maximize the exploitation of the land. But I also wanted to change gears because a lot of the stuff we see in the Amazon is, is taken from over, from, a, from alt high altitude. What about the stuff we don't see, the non-human? If you take one square inch of, of life in, in the rainforest, it's just, it's tripping with life. Just the amount of species is extraordinary. Scientists use ultraviolet lights to try and show things about plants. So I borrowed that language and created these very strange, almost gothic nocturnes. But yeah, we can put the big flat bar here. Let's keep that. Right you can see actually the little animals in there moving around. We had a lot but, of technical issues. Yeah, but we'd spend hours and hours, and then all of a sudden the light would turn off. And then, or the camera would shut down. Actually, half the time the camera was overheating. The third scale that I chose to examine was the human scale. We hold a lot of responsibility for the processes that unfold in the Amazon. A lot of the cheap beef directly coming straight from encroached primary forest. And also just our banks. A lot of that money is predicated on agribusiness interests in Brazil. So it's everywhere. It surrounds us. But how do we implicate the viewer? This is the real problem and one that we wanted to do. And our answer was to make a Western. And that's weirdly incongruous, you would think, with the rainforest. But actually, everywhere we went in the rainforest, a lot of the processes we were witnessing of deforestation were being carried out by cowboys. Cowboy culture actually began centuries ago in Spain. And then it was exported to North America, where it became its own distinct thing. And when it made its way to northern Brazil in the Amazon, 
it became sort of bastardized by the cultural aspirations of, of, of the United States, of manifest destiny, which had already devastated the environment and the indigenous communities in, in the United States, but is now doing the same in the Amazon. And it's almost identical in spirit. The texture of the spaghetti western immediately resonates with the viewer, with the western viewer anyway. And I think that hopefully it will be overly familiar to us. This is our culture. We don't set out, open the door one morning with a fixed idea that we have to go and prove. Um, we try to absorb the narrative in the field, in real life. And that's a conversation with the subject and with the people whom we meet along the way. There's nothing that is like actually being in the field and you just learn so much just from conversations with people on the ground. It's, it's just amazing. <clears throat> My power, if I have any, is to be able to show you this, what I've seen, in a more powerful way than, I don't know, than perhaps the pictures that you've seen in the newspaper of the same thing, or in a, in a new and different way, and to make you remember that. Take down the horse to my daughter and mine.